Well, as you can see, I've uh, taken the mountain man and the Indian wife and put them over there with the other clays that are collecting dust <laughs> in my studio. All right, I'm going to uh, get the armature set up. So the first thing I want to do, and the reason I'm using two boards instead of one, is I want them to uh, uh, be thick enough that when I drill a hole for the uh, main support, it'll go down through this piece of wood and give me enough uh, contact between the uh, well, it'll be deep enough to give it some strength to place this at, and so I'm going to put the clay, or the uh, clumsy little butter, ain't I? So, I need to go forward just a little bit. I want the same distance between the back of the uh, base and the front of the base, and I want the uh, thing centered in the body. And so that's what I'm doing right there. Now, I'm going to mark where this is. Oops, I got uh, the uh, another set of drill bits, and I'm thinking that one is the one I want right there. Away. And I'll pour some glue in there. <clears throat> and I'll stick this down in a hole. Excellent. Great. There we go. Oops, I get this uh, positioned right. good. The base was off just a little bit, or, or at least the way the uh, figure sat, sat on it, and so I've uh, adjusted the uh, angle a little bit on the uh, base, leaving a little gap which I need to fill in with clay, and I've done that so that it'll hold it in place. Now I've got uh, photographs of the original clay that I've uh, photogra uh, printed out on photo paper so that I get a little better detail. And uh, I'll be working from these. Okay, that looks like the angle that I had the original. So now I just need to anchor this down so that I've got 
get centered on my sculpting stand so that I can uh, have it at the right angle all the way around. I guess the next thing to do is start adding clay to it. Uh, let's get the light above it. So I'm just going to start adding and I'm going to start from the base and go up. Now I'm not going to show you all this. I'll show you parts of it here and there but as far as uh, videoing all this I mean it'd just be like watching duck feathers shed water and be about as interesting too. Well I'm preparing to uh, send out another one of my DVDs uh, my new ones on uh, the uh, clay to bronze process uh, basically following through the uh, foundry from the beginning to the end uh, this is a supplemental uh, DVD. It's not as expensive. It's about uh, uh, $20 off of the uh, regular price of my other DVDs. Uh, so it's, 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 it's very affordable. Now you go to my uh, blog, which is, uh, let's see if I can get it on there. A Day in the Life of a Lemon, block dot blogspot.com. That's my website. And, uh, when you get there, this is the, the home page, and you'll see up here at the top right-hand column, let me get my thing in here, I'm holding the camera, so I hope I'm not making it you sick, seasick watching this. There's a buy now t uh, tab right there, and what you do is you just click on this uh, little drop-down menu, and you got all six of my DVDs, uh, and then right at the bottom is this clay to bronze, which is the uh, founder tour. And as you can see, it's uh, not as expensive as the ones above. If you don't understand anything on this page, here's a uh, language uh, thing here. Uh, you just drop this uh, menu down and you can select any language uh, that you speak and it will translate. Okay, I've got the uh, base covered in clay. The reason I want to get this covered in clay as quickly as I can is because this stuff sheds little tiny flakes of foam and when it gets in the clay it's nearly impossible to get it out of the clay. It's like having a little pebble in your uh, surface of the clay. It's kind of hard to see what I'm doing back in some of these areas. But that's the way it is. So my plan is, as soon as I get him completely covered in clay, then I can start going over and adding the detail I need to add. Because there's a, <clears throat> a lot of detail did not come out in this, in this foam, like the wrinkles in the pants legs and stuff like that. really makes me mad is how little detail came out in this thing though. I mean in general shape it's there but there is no detail in here at all and that's going to take some of my going over my photographs to make sure I got it right. I'm trying to keep the layer of clay very thin so whatever details in there I somehow get. I mean, here I had beautiful detail of the strap and powder horn and the uh, shot bag. All that's just not there. There's a little bit of the pocket right there on this side. So I'm not going to cover, uh, cover up that uh, edge of the pocket because I need to match that on the other side. back and clean up these edges later. The fingers on his hand broke off. I 
not that I could have used them anyway, but uh, I'll have to re-sculpt that hand. Maybe I'll do it in wax. See, I was getting little tiny pieces of foam down here on the clay, which is going to play havoc later on. All right, that's going to be as far as I go today. And I'll pick this up tomorrow. I just didn't want to get into too many areas like here. I'm going to have to cut all that out and uh, take it right back to uh, the neck and then rebuild that whole area because that, all that detail is just gone. But it does have the general feeling of the uh, original piece. And uh, when I get everything back together, oops, that's the wrong way. And then the rifle barrel. Here, I'm going to have to re reconstruct that, but it gives me the right length for it. There we go. So, that's it for now. See you uh, next time.